The Legend of Zelda series has a huge cast of unique and interesting characters, but we can all agree that some of them are just flat out creepy. So in celebration for the month of Halloween, let's go through the top 10 creepiest characters in the Legend of Zelda series. Number 10. I don't think I need to tell you too much about Tingle to tell you why I find him so creepy. I mean, look at him. He's literally a 30 year old man dressed in a freaking green spandex telling little boys he's a fairy. I think that already explains it all. Tingle has made his way in many titles within the series, each time no creepier than before. With his first appearance being in Majora's Mask, as he can be found throughout all of Termina, with him flying on his air balloon, drawing out maps from high points for Link to later on purchase. And aside from Tingle helping you out with maps, you don't really learn too much else about him, aside from the fact that his father is actually in Majora's Mask. His father being the owner of the Tourist Center Guide, with him being very disappointed in how Tingle grew up to be. And I can't blame him, I mean as mentioned before, he is a 35 year old man claiming to be a reincarnation of a fairy. Seems a bit weird. And while there isn't really too much to learn about Tingle from the other titles, aside from him having twin brothers and an island named after him, in the spin-off game freshly picked Tingle's Rosy Rupee Land, Tingle starred in a game of his own. And in it we learned a little bit more about Tingle, probably the origins of why he is what he is. As in it, Tingle is promised paradise from a weird giant rupee known as Uncle Rupee. And to no surprise, in order to receive this paradise, he must collect as many rupees as he can and throw them into the western pool. From there on, Tingle becomes obsessed with rupees, with it running his life, as it shows in many other games he's in. While this doesn't explain why Tingle pretends to be a fairy, he will forever be a pretty weird, creepy, and obscure character within the series. Also, are we going to ignore the fact that the first time you meet Tingle in The Wind Waker, he's imprisoned and you need to help him escape? I mean, how did he end up in there? What crime did he do? Huh? Number 9 While she comes off as a cute girl with a fascination for bugs, you realize it's much more than just a fascination. More like a complete obsession. Agatha lives in her castle found within Hyrule Castle Town during the era of Twilight Princess. She can often be found during the day just outside of the town looking for bugs herself, but when she isn't searching for them, she's at her castle awaiting for the Grand Golden Bug Ball. Yes, you heard that right. As she sent out invitations to the golden bugs found within Hyrule to attend her ball. When Link first meets her, she tasks him to find these golden bugs in exchange for rewards like rupees or even a bigger wallet for the plenty of rupees you'll be getting for exchanging those golden bugs. And as Link collects more for her, her house becomes filled more and more with these golden bugs, flying all throughout it. And with one good look at her house, uh, I mean you realize that all she seems to care about is bugs. From the way she's dressed with butterfly wings on her back and dress, along with some weird creepy sixth sense of somehow knowing whether a golden bug is nearby. As when Link attempts to leave her house with a golden bug he hasn't exchanged with her yet, she seems to know as she tells Link and doesn't seem quite happy about it. Now don't get me wrong, I can totally understand why someone would be interested in these bugs. I mean they are glowing golden bugs that shine in the night. Who wouldn't want to at least observe one of them? But inviting them to a ball while living in a house infested with them and dressing up like one spending hundreds of rupees on them seems a bit creepy. Number 8 The Zelda series can be very mysterious sometimes, and there's one character that's weird, creepy, and mysterious. Guru Guru, also known as the Windmill Man. In every game that he's seen in, he acts strange, especially his facial expressions. In The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, if Adult Link pulls out his ocarina in front of him, he will teach Link the Song of Storms, even though he hates the song. And his facial expressions at that point are really disturbing. His eyes are completely white. It looks like he's possessed. Besides that, he also seems to have some mental issues. The best way to describe it is bipolar. This is a mental illness where you switch between emotions a lot 
and also very abruptly. A great example of Guru Guru doing this is seen in Majora's Mask when you go to him at night in the laundry pool area of Clock Town. He's playing his phonograph there since he has been kicked out of his room for practicing too loud. Now usually he's a very happy person, but here he mixes his emotions a lot when he tells you the story of how he obtained the Bremen Mask. The way he tells you the story is really creepy since he repeats himself a lot and goes from normal, calm and happy to mad, slightly aggressive and even devilish looking. Stuff like this makes him a creepy and weird character. It's a fun one, but also an extremely disturbing one. Number 7 This shouldn't be much of a surprise that Dompe would be on the list, right? I mean, he is a creepy hunchback, almost toothless gravekeeper. From the first time you meet him in Ocarina of Time, you get that creepy vibe. You find him in Kakariko's graveyard watching over the graves at night. He spends his nights walking around the gravestones with a shovel, and offers Link to dig up soft spots for a small price. Now, I'm not sure why a gravekeeper would be willing to dig around his own grave for money, but in doing so, he seemed to have even admired a young kid to copy him during the day. As the little kid walks around with the little stick imitating Dompe, while wanting a spooky mask to really help sell his Dompe impression, as Dompe looks pretty spooky. I'm not sure how much of Dompe has rubbed off onto this kid, but throughout the years, the kid is never found. Or some say. But that's not my point, that's for later in this list. Though aside from Dompe not being the best gravekeeper out there, when he dies years later, his spirit still resides within the graveyard, racing those underground, and it's kind of sad to see that in his life and death, he still roamed the graves of Kakariko. And to no surprise, when featured in other games like Majora's Mask, he can also be found in a graveyard, this time the Akana Graveyard. Also being its gravekeeper, yet in a far scarier and creepier location. Yet somehow, what scares him the most is masks worn by Link. <laughs> And throughout the other couple titles, he also appeared as a gravekeeper who lived in a graveyard of some sort with little to know about him. Just always appearing sad and creepy on his job. Or just straight up stupid. Number 6 <laughs> Breath of the Wild introduced a lot of new and interesting characters that we have never seen before. One of them is Kilton a monster fanatic who owns the fang and bone traveling shop where he sells monster related wares. Now the reason why this thing is creepy is because it's odd and extremely fanatic about his, let's call it, hobbies. He even came up with a completely new currency named Mon and it's based around monsters. That's the only reason he made it. His research and love for it all goes so far that it's more like an obsession than a normal hobby. He lives and breathes it. Besides that, you give him a ton of monster parts throughout your adventure, and it's never really explained what he does with it. If you sell him something, he even mentions the heavenly smell. Yeah, it's pretty messed up. Little things like that make him seem weird and creepy, which he certainly is, but this just makes it worse. He also looks creepy. I don't know what he's supposed to be, but if you see him from a distance, you're already on edge. Overall, an, let's say, interesting character. Number 5 While never given a proper name, Pamela's father was a scientist who researched supernatural phenomena like ghosts and spirits. He lives with his daughter Pamela, duh, in the music box house found in the Akana Canyon. He moved there with his daughter to research the ghosts and spirits that have haunted the Akana Valley. And the music box house they lived in, to no surprise, produced music that would drive away the undead spirits that roamed around their house. The one day during Pamela's father's research, he got cursed while attempting to enter a nearby well near the music box house. The curse inflicted on him slowly caused him to turn into a Gibdo, the exact same thing the music box kept away from their house. 
Pamela, terrified of what her father had become, trapped him into a closet in their basement. Unfortunately for her, the river that kept the music box working dried out, resulting in the music stopping while allowing Gibdos to surround their house once more. This leaving Pamela in the worst situation with nowhere to run. And if not for Link saving her, her father would have ruined his and her life over such dangerous research. And when Link first finds him, he emerges from the closet, and you see the results of a mad scientist who risked it all, even his daughter, for research. Quite the creepy story. Number four. Now the undead can be very frightening, just look at the amount of horror movies based around them. There are thousands. And the Legend of Zelda series is also filled with them from Stelphos to Gyptos. There are all kinds of creepy, not breathing beings in the games. However, number 4 goes to the infamous Poe Collector, who was seen in both Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time. Especially in Ocarina of Time, this weird being came across as scary, evil, and really creepy. In this game, he runs the ghost shop. The store is set in a broken, haunted, and horror-filled Hyrule Castle town that turned into this thanks to Ganondorf. When you enter his shop, you can see and feel the eerie vibe and look of the place. The lighting is dimmed, there are ghosts, and he's just sitting there. Wait, that stick, the obsession with the dead, could this be? When you talk to him, he calls you young, brave, and handsome, which is already creepy. And then he even knows your name because he reads your mind. He even makes the most creepy comments in the entire game. He says, if I looked as good as you, I could run a different kind of business. And then laughs. I'm not even gonna explain what he means with this. It's just creepy. Also, there's a theory that this Poe was once the boy in the graveyard, and keeping that in mind, makes it even more disturbing. Number 3 Imagine one day going to use the bathroom, and as you open the toilet seat, you find a hand coming out of it. Yeah, not a pretty picture. Yet somehow, this is a reoccurring character within the Zelda series. You first find this mysterious hand at the Stockpot Inn in Majora's Mask during the nighttime. It begs Link for paper, for whatever reason, in exchange for a piece of heart. Where and how that hand ended there is unknown, but this mysterious hand later appears in other titles such as Skyward Sword, once again requesting paper. Though unlike in Majora's Mask with the title deeds and overall the option to rewind time, you can give that hand whatever you want. But in Skyward Sword, Link is only given one option for a specific piece of paper to give it, which makes no sense with Link being in an academy, you'd think it'd be easier to find paper, right? But that's aside the point. This piece of paper being Colin's love letter. If the mysterious hand is given the letter instead of Karain as intended, the mysterious hand will think that the love letter is meant for her. This obviously leaving the hand to believe that Colin is in love with her, resulting in her creepily stroking his head at night, stalking him in a sense. It just makes me wonder where and what this hand is connected to or why it's just a hand. It's so freaking weird, especially when you first see it caressing Colin's face at night. Number two! He's a figure of authority in the land. He thinks quite highly of himself, preferring to be called Lord. I think you already know who I'm talking about. Girahim, a flamboyant, seemingly calm, overconfident demon who is as creepy as they get. When you first encounter him, he's extremely cryptic, gets straight into your comfort zone, and even whips out his tongue. He also teleports and moves all over the place and does all kinds of poses and moves, which are kind of creepy and weird. Besides that, he loves to all of a sudden appear behind you and even grabs your shoulders. He just gets way too close to you. It makes you feel uncomfortable and weird. Overall, he just creeps me out from his movements to how he speaks and how he acts. All of these things are huge warning signs. And before number one, we have two honorable mentions that were tied for number two along with Girahim. These two playing very similar roles to what Girahim did in Skyward Sword, making it feel like we should only mention one of the three. These two being Yuga and Zant. 
with both Yuga and Zant being henchmen of Ganondorf, similar to what Girahim was to Demise, and all three of them having very creepy personalities. With Yuga and his obsession with beauty while also looking pretty terrifying for having such an obsession, while also wanting to capture the beauty he finds in framed pictures. And then we have Zant, who seems completely menacing throughout Twilight Princess. Until he reveals his face at the very end, acting like a complete monkey and throwing tantrums, especially in the final battle, with how crazy he acts. I'll be honest, it gives him a more creepy vibe, seeing how psycho he really is without his helmet. Overall, all three of these characters are really well fleshed out with their creepy personalities, and I absolutely love all three, and that's why I feel like they all deserve to be on the list, but Girahim was given the number two spotlight because, I mean, Girahim was Demise's second hand, not Ganondorf's, so, you know, Girahim was the original of the creepy sidekicks Ganondorf has had. But anyways, on to number one. Number one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> To no surprise, the creepiest character on this list is the Happy Mask Salesman. If you played Majora's Mask, you know exactly why. Though interestingly enough, he was first shown in Ocarina of Time as the owner of the Happy Mask Shop in Hyrule's Marketplace. There he hires Link to become a happiness salesman, where Link borrows masks from his shop and sells them to people around Hyrule. This unlocking more unique masks for Link to collect and wear. While this mainly being just a side quest, it evolved into a game of its own, with Majora's Mask's focus being about these masks the Happy Mask salesman knows and collects, all the way to the terrifyingly destructive Majora's Mask. And with the events of Ocarina of Time moving on to Majora's Mask, the Happy Mask Salesman gets robbed by the Skull Kid that steals Link's ocarina in the beginning of the game. And as Link reaches his way to Termina, he realizes that the Happy Mask Salesman has been following him the whole time in hopes that Link will retrieve his precious mask stolen from the Skull Kid. And after educating Link about the dark powers of the mask and how badly he needs it back, I can't help but question if it's even safe in his hands. I mean, how does this guy know this much? And why does he carry such a powerful mask with him if a little imp can easily steal it away from him? Overall, the Happy Mask Salesman seems a bit off, and he does a pretty good job showing you that with how emotional he gets wanting that mask back. But with how powerful the mask truly is, and the Skull Kid spreading evil with the mask, Link is really given no other choice as he must battle his way through three days again and again rewinding time to somehow manage to retrieve that mask back. And what's also pretty strange is the fact that he remembers what happens every time Link rewinds time, not being affected by it whatsoever, though this could be the result of him being inside the clock tower, with the time not affecting inside the tower, and only affecting outside, which is pretty weird as it is. But aside from that, as you continue on, you share a song that is taught to you by him. A song that is known to heal the wounded soul. It being the Song of Healing, which is by far one of the best songs in the game because of the creepy vibes it gives. The song is used multiple times within the game to heal those in need, but what I find really creepy about it is sometimes those who are healed are turned into a mask, somehow trapping their spirit within the mask itself. And it sure makes you wonder, could have he used this song to create other masks he has? I mean, is that mask on his back of Mario actually Mario himself somehow turned into a mask by playing him the Song of Healing? Whoa! Probably not, but overall, the way the song works and the song itself is still pretty creepy. I mean, it sure makes you wonder where did the Happy Mask Salesman get all this knowledge? Or more importantly, where did he find Majora's Mask? But just as creepily as he came into the game, he disappears once he gets his precious mask leaving a lot of unanswered questions. Also, his laugh is creepy as hell. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Zelda Master, and thank you all so much for watching this top 10 of the creepiest characters within the Zelda series. I had a lot of fun making this, along with Dr. Wily, and if you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, and if you feel like there's a creepy character I didn't mention within the series, let me know your list in the comments below. But anyways, if you want to see more, uh, you know, top 10s along with Dr. Wily, I actually made a collab on his channel very similar to this one of the top 10 worst bosses within Zelda, or the most hated bosses. So if you want to see our most hated bosses in a top 10 list, be sure to check it out. It was a lot of fun, 
to you know work on this with him and yeah overall I suggest if you want more just to check out his channel and check out his stuff but anyways Again, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, feedback below is always appreciated. If there's another top 10 you want me to make or anything in mind, also let me know in the comments. Anyways, again, thank you all so much for watching. I've been Zelda Master. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.